Sharon Callahan, and I work for Pixar Animation Studios and as a director of photography, which means that I'm responsible for the final look of the images and carrying them all the way through to the final output put formats like film and um, D-Cinema, DVD, Blu-ray, 3D, 3D IMAX, um, you know, kind of, and I direct a lighting team primarily and oversee some of the other departments. Well, I usually start on the film about three years before the release date, roughly, depending upon the film, and the first year and a half or so is pre-production, and I spend that time doing um, design work and research and look development and kind of develop a plan for how we're going to execute the film. And then at about a year and a half out or so, I start bringing on uh, a small crew to, to do early production work, and at about a year out, sometimes less, Cars 2 it was less, um, you know, I start bringing on the, the bulk of the lighting crew. And on Cars 2 we topped out at about 57 lighters, which is a very large crew for us. Um, and that was because we were working on a shorter schedule than normal. And what I do at that stage of the process is I spend a lot of time with the lighters one-on-one, -on -one, um, doing walkthroughs, looking at shots, and giving advice on how to make the images look better, and um, going to shading walkthroughs, shading reviews, um, sweat box reviews, um, and various other kind of director reviews that are going on, effects review, that sort of thing, and, um, and kind of help guide the shots to completion. That was kind of the big challenge of this particular film is that the scope of it was enormous and we knew that from the beginning and not only did we have a large number of sets but the sets themselves were to these vast expanses of, of buildings and trees and stuff that seemed to go on forever and it was one of the things we had to figure out was how to how could we build out such a big set and not run out of memory and be able to render the thing. Um, and it took a while, and we ended up, you know, using City Engine for the London set because that ended up being the solution for that. On some of the other sets, we didn't. The other thing that we tried to do is, you know, have a lot of reflective surfaces it, as a part of the the contrast to radiator springs, and you know that means you're rendering essentially more than you would be if they weren't wet. So sometimes I had to kind of scale back a little bit on that because it gets expensive after a while, but. You know, whenever it really pushed the look, we definitely used shiny surfaces like wet streets, shiny floors, shiny walls, that sort of thing. Well, two sequences kind of spring to mind. The first one was the opening spy sequence with all the water out in the ocean. Um, we started on that as one of our first sequences because we knew it was going to be really difficult. We just wanted to get it out of the way, and it was really good that we did, <laughs> so we didn't have too much piling up at the end. Usually the tendency is to delay those kind of sequences so you have more time to work with them, but I think it was the right decision to, to jump on those early. Um, that had a lot of effects work, um, and it, 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 being a night sequence too, it was particularly difficult to to wrangle to completion. Um, the other sequence that springs to mind is the, the Porta Corsa sequence in Italy um, because that, that set was very difficult for the sets team to, to put together. It took a long time. Um, and so by the time it got into lighting, we had a very short amount of time to turn that around before the reel was due. So I ended up spreading it out over you know most of my lighting crew to kind of push that through in about three weeks when normally I would probably use a smaller crew for a longer period of time and so that was more just kind of a scheduling um, complexity rather than it being particularly difficult otherwise. Absolutely that's why our early sequences often we call our sacrificial sequences because we know that that might happen. And um, on this film, they didn't end up feeling like we wished we could have done them differently or better, thankfully. But you know, there's some times where that happens. And I think another sequence that we, the other sequence we started on early that was very difficult as well was the downtown Tokyo Ginza district race um, with all the neon signage and stuff. That was another one that we were glad we started on early. Well, I, I think that's the thing that I, why I love doing what I do and why I'm so passionate about it is that light is something that, you know, can do so much, you know, it's, it's symbolic in its own right, you know, whether it's there or the absence of light. Um, and 
you know, the color of the light makes a huge difference too in, in the mood of the scene, how soft the light is, how it's shaped, how it falls across a surface or a, or a face um, has a profound effect on how you feel about a character or about the environment. And um, in Cars 2 in particular, you know, we were trying to use the, the lighting scenarios for each set not only to kind of help support the mood of the story at that particular time, but also to um, evoke a sense of place, of you know London feeling like London, of Japan feeling like Japan. Um, and so the time of day was carefully chosen to have the right kind of mood and look to it.